Welcome to Only Murders in My Mind, a Random Thought production. Hi, I'm Carol Bissett, a crime writer, and I invite you with my co-presenters, Liz Hedgecock and Mike Jackson, each week to our conversations on all things murderous. Hello everyone and welcome to episode four of Only Murders in My Mind. Thank you for listening, and I'd like to introduce my co-host, Liz Hedgecock. Hi, Liz. Hello. And Mike Jackson. Hello, Carol. Hello, Liz. So we've been uh, really thrilled about the number of listens we've had, and uh, adding to that, could you like us, share us, subscribe? That would be wonderful, but just listen. We just want you to listen, really. Uh, The subject today is paranormal crime, and this can cover a multitude of things we've got uh such things as is it the rivers of london rivers of london series mm-hmm. yes. yes by ben Ar- aranovich yes well get done tongue, mike i'm <laughs> gonna say get your tongue around that <laughs> glad one. that was you and not me <laughs> um ck mcdonald who wrote the stranger times that's right yeah mm-hmm. I've, I've read both of those or some of them um, and then we're going to look at uh, can we have cosy witch stories and a few of the things that we like uh, to either read or watch or listen to uh, that come under this paranormal crimes heading. So we'll start off with p- people we like to read. Um, Mike, you've got quite a few that you can talk about that you, you like to read in the paranormal crime series. That's right. I mean, we've just talked about Ben Aranovich, uh, who's got this Rivers of London series. Mm. And uh, in the first book, which is called Rivers of London, it starts off with the young policeman, Peter Grant. He's trying to make the most of a dull beat when he takes a witness state from, statement from a ghost. I always love it when something like that unexpectedly happens. You think, ah, I'm going to enjoy this book. <laughs> it's a brilliant opening, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> And, and he gets drawn into a special branch of the Metropolitan Police, which is run by a wizard. And they investigate the unusual and the unexplainable. It's what the rest of the police just don't want to believe in. They hand over to this unit. And um, it's part police procedure, part magic. Uh, you get introduced to a London filled with ghosts, fairies, wizards. And most importantly of all, river goddesses. Yeah, I like them. Mm. (laughs) It's a great series. It's a great series once you get hooked into it. uh... Can I make a confession here? I didn't know there was a river fleet under Fleet Street. I'm sorry about that. That's really (laughs) bad, isn't it? But you can get maps of all the underground rivers that are still there. It runs close to um, the Olympic Park. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but this is it. There are some rivers now that we we don't see above ground, aren't there? And they've all got goddesses. Yes, goddesses. I'd like to say females. (laughs) Um, So, I mean, I think when I read that, it took me, it did take me into another world. I I really enjoyed it. Um, The uh, Strange Times. Stranger Times is by C.K. MacDonald. He's an Irishman, and I think my Irish is not good at all. I think it's Kem, Kem MacDonald, I think it's his Might be, name. or Kev, maybe, I'm not sure. Um, my Irish, again, is not good. He's a, he's a former professional stand-up comedian. <laughs> Comes you, can, well. you can and, see and, it, and, can't yes, you? Yes, you can see it. <laughs> yeah. and, he's, and, uh, he now lives in Manchester, apparently. Mm. But The Stranger Times is it's a very strange book to start with. It's set in Manchester, isn't set it? Set in Manchester, yes. yeah. And it's, it's the first of a four-book series. And basically, it's a weekly newsletter dedicated to the weird and the wonderful, but mostly the weird. And it's the ghost go-to publication for the unexplained and inexplicable. So I suppose a bit like the World Weekly News or the yes, National right, Enquirer, yeah, yeah. but a, a Mancunian version. <laughs> and the editor a is a, a drunken, foul-tempered and foul-mouthed husk of a man who thinks little of the publication he edits. And his staff are a right ragtag group of misfits. Um, but it, 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 there's a lot of humour in it, which you can tell by this chap being a comedian. Um, but it takes you into it takes you into a world that is so unbelievable that after a while you believe it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, kind of like in Men in Black when they they go and buy all the you know 
those sorts of publications and say, well, this is where the real news is. Yes. That's where they get their info. Because I can remember when I started reading that, um, the thing that stuck in my mind was somebody was on the, the ledge of the um, upstairs throw, threatening to throw themselves off. Mm-hmm. And somehow the editor ended up shooting himself in the foot at some point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was like, Wasn't there a bit set in Castlefield as well? can't remember I that. think so, yeah, yeah near the beginning. So yeah. I think they were at Castlefield Viaduct. Yeah. Yeah, all local things. Before the National remember. Trust got to it. <laughs> it would have been a bit different then, probably. Yeah, so, I mean, the editor is, is really uncouth. <laughs> yeah. Not likeable at all. And it comes across very well. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, he's a horrible man to yeah. work for. He reminds me a little bit of Jackson Man. Yes. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> I, I think I, I didn't read those books either, Stranger Times. I listened to them. I, I listened to a lot of books and I listened to them on Audible. And the guy narrating them was absolutely amazing. And he just painted the picture of this uh, this editor yes. so, so clearly. I, I, that was one of the first books I bought to listen to, to. listen to. And because it was so good, I suppose that got me hooked on, on buying um, audio books rather mm. than... I, I still... Um, buy a lot of books that I download onto Kindle, but I don't buy many paperbacks anymore. But we'll we'll talk about that. That's mm. just a, a preference. Just a quick uh, thing about this C.K. Macdonald too. That the Stranger Times fits very much under the paranormal, but also that fits under what fits under the uh, the murder mystery genre is he's done a another trilogy of which there are at least six. Mm. Um, <laughs> like a Douglas Adams type trilogy, <laughs> called uh, the Dublin Detective, uh-huh. um, which are. I was going to ask you about these and how yeah, they compare. They're, they're not paranormal, but they're extremely uh, well written. Great, mm-hmm. it's the characters. He creates these great characters, mm. and uh, this detective uh, in that one is called Bunny, who's a real. He, he sort of wanders around with a Hurley. Is it Hurley? They play over there. Yeah. Yeah. Bat, which he oh, uses yeah. quite like indiscriminately, yeah, quite indiscriminately to um, <laughs> to warn people that uh, they've broken the law. Yeah. Um, How does he use it? Uh, Should I not the, ask? Around the head or around the, or chops people's legs away from them. He obviously, know. doesn't know the rules, does he? And, uh, yeah, he makes. <laughs> well, up I don't the know the rules, rules of Hurley yeah. either. He makes up the rules. <laughs> I play. I played a, a game at junior school called Shinty. Which mm-hmm. very similar, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and uh, that was you don't take the stick above your waist. Um, and I saw the reason why once when one of my uh, school friends got clouted round the head with it, and when I looked at her, there was just it was just blood everywhere, mm. you know, and, and and it really put me off things like that. I don't know why, <laughs> but it did. <laughs> Another very quick one that, that I, I'd almost forgotten because it's some time since I read these. Uh, a chap called Jim Butcher, uh, the Dresden Files. Oh yes, there's about seventeen books. In I haven't the series. read them, but I've heard a lot about yeah. them. It's on my list. Uh, and again, he's My a wizard. My list is very big. Yeah. yeah, he's a wizard. Advertises in the <laughs> there are wizards dressed in in Chicago, um, and also helps the police out with anything that might be strange and unexplainable. Um, and also, they have a a white council that uh, sort of polices the wizards, and he's mm-hmm. always in trouble with them uh, to the point that they're going to expel him from the white council. And the way they do that is lop your head off. Bit final. It is, isn't it? I take yes. it there's no appeals. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can't be reinstated and your head stitched back on. No, no. no. Once you're out, you're out. <laughs> yeah. 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 But another great series of books to read if you mm. if you enjoy supernatural, paranormal. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I, I I must admit I don't read a lot of uh, sort of crime, paranormal, but I do watch it on the television, mm. and mm. something that that sort of. It is paranormal, but it's not paranormal. I've just been re-watching the Jonathan Creek series, which, and we're going back a lot of years now from, from the first one. And um, these were unexplained um, happenings that then he would uh, put into perspective and tell you how it happened. And you'd be going, why didn't I see that? That's so obvious. I've got to say they did get a bit convoluted somewhere in the middle. And I was like, would that man really spend two hours putting all that scaffolding up just to, for five minutes and, you know, that sort of thing? Mm. Uh, but, I mean, you've got to think of a, a, a really good plot for each episode. Mm. So, you know, mm. that can't be... So the person that wrote it must have had a really, really 
um, clever mind to be able to think of these. I'm sure he had people he referred to, but mm -hmm. as I say, it made you think. If you'd seen that without the explanation, you'd have gone, oh, that's paranormal. That's that's really scary. But once he sort of said, well, this is what's happened, you're going, why didn't I get that straight away? Um, mm. Liz, what do you like to read in the... Uh, I know you write paranormal, but what mm. do you like to read in paranormal? Well, um, it's an interesting one. I think I I tend to read crime books or paranormal books rather than paranormal crime, if you see what yeah. I mean. But one I have read recently, and I've been meaning to get around to ages, and I finally did, um, was Susan Hill's Woman in Black. Yep. Anyone they made it? a film out of that. Well, yeah, it's been on the stage. I it think, has. Yeah. It? Yeah. I think Darren Radcliffe was in it. Yes, he was. Yeah. He was definitely. He was in the film, wasn't he? I was in the film. I know he was on the stage. I might be getting confused mm -hmm. here, but yes, yes. No, I, I, I enjoyed that um, kind of Victorian ghost story type stuff going on. I think it must have been later than Victorian because of a car's in it. I mean, it's never explicitly said. But yeah, the, the kind of the feeling of creeping menace, and it's not a crime book. It's like, although you know bad things happen. Um, but yes, um, really atmospheric. I want to say it was quite chilling, but I think it's the sort of thing where I don't actually believe in ghosts, so it doesn't bother you. It doesn't bother me in the same way as I can read a Stephen King book, and it doesn't really bother me because I know it's not real. If you see what I mean, so I cannot watch horror I, mm -hmm. I can't it, it gives me nightmares um i was one of the people that would have flocked to the cinema to see the exorcist when it came out on film but i, I couldn't go mm -hmm. one of my friends went and she was um very level-headed nothing spooked her and she said she always had to sleep with the light on after she'd watched that so uh yeah uh i I draw the line at, at horror. I, I really, I'm like behind the pillow looking over the top, you know. So <laughs> I, I suppose it's the definition of where one starts and the other stops. You yeah. know, what, what is just paranormal and makes you a little bit sort of, oh, could that really happen to, you know, something really scary? But, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, people love horror, don't they? Yeah, people I think, love it. I think I'm with you on that, Carol. I don't think I've ever watched a horror movie because I don't want to. Uh, mm -hmm. I've never read Stephen King, uh, though I think I should. And I think that the paranormal that I read, some of the books I've just talked about, are so, in a way, unreal. It makes for entertaining reading, but it doesn't scare me as such. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think some of the horror films sometimes seem a bit closer to reality, which I think is what might give you the nightmares. Especially when at the beginning of the film or the book, they go, this is based on a real life story, like the, they said for The Exorcist. And then that, that really gets you like, ooh, you know, did this really <laughs> happen? Sort of thing. I know the book I'm writing at the moment, the, the fourth um, in the series of The Warrington Detective, there's a talk of exorcism there and there's a, there's a, a few uh, weird things going on. Um, but not to the point where they're uh, going to make people not be able... To, some of it might not make you not be able to sleep at night, but not the bit about the, the exorcism. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the bit about the bodies being cut up and things like oh, that. Oh, Carol. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the other things I've put here, um, there's been a series on the television. It was on Netflix. I know not everybody's got... Um, you can get Netflix. And it's a spin-off from Sherlock Holmes and it was called The Irregulars and that was based on Supernatural, which um, I quite enjoyed. Not a lot of people, when I talk about it, they go, oh, I've not heard of that. Um, but it was, uh, Dr. Watson was the person that they saw. I think they came into contact with Sherlock Holmes towards the end when Sherlock was really like in a bad way. Because Sherlock, in, in all the series, it doesn't matter what you watch or what you read, he tends to end up at some point where he's not looking after himself and he's taking drugs, etc. cetera. So um, that was, as I say, based on them trying to find and close like a, a hell hole that, that was starting to open up. Um, I quite enjoyed that. Now, did you say they were psychic or one of them? One of them, psychic? just one yeah. of the girls was 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 psychic. Yeah, she mm. could, she could commune with um, spirits and she could see dead people and all this sort ah. of thing. So she could sort of 
foretell what's going to happen and, and um, yeah. That, See, now I'd be going for the lottery numbers rather than seeking <laughs> the hell mouth and trying to close it. But maybe I'm just too practical for this sort of thing. This yeah. is why I'm not streaming on Netflix, clearly. <laughs> um, yeah, The House of the Baskerville, as I say, um, it always comes over as a really creepy story. Um with a hint of the supernatural in mm. it, uh, it's it. That's one of the stories well, we find out, don't we? It's explained. Oh yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. But as I say, when I when I watched it when I was quite young, again I had the pillow in front of my face, going, "What? What's happening next? <laughs> I can't wait to watch." Um, so you know that that sort of uh, a tale um, that yeah. we all we all know of. Yeah, um, and I suppose also with the Hound of the Baskervilles, we get the explanation for the Hound. But then at the end, there's um, the fate of one of the characters and you kind of think, well, is the bog, the mire, does that have some kind of weird, creepy life in it? Yeah. So yeah. So, so things that are, are less Sometimes the creepy is where you don't expect it. Yeah, and I think it's this um, uh, thing with supernatural or I suppose horror as well. It's the, mm-hmm. the build-up when you don't know um, mm. the mild peril. <laughs> uh, the, the, the noise... Always makes me laugh, contains mild peril. Yes, yeah. contains mild peril. And the music building up, you know something's going to happen, you know. So mm. it's it's all about the anticipation of there being something uh, quite not normal, not, not human. Well, mm. that's where Conan Doyle was, was really good because, as Liz said, the whole book builds up this creepy atmosphere all around the the moors and all the rest mm. of it and even though even though there is a logical explanation at the end about the hound it doesn't do away from the fact that during the book you feel a bit uneasy and yeah creepy. and you still think oh that's a creepy place i wouldn't fancy wouldn't that fancy yeah. being there yeah. mm. right. i've got to say when i is when it I... dartmoor yes yes is it I, dartmoor? yeah i got chased by a badger once on dartmoor <sighs> just you know the hound of the badger <laughs> the badger of the <laughs> baskervilles yeah. <laughs> the other thing that uh, always um, makes me cringe is when there's been a horrible spate of murders somewhere and they've been targeting women out on their own mm. and then you see somebody coming out of a club at two o'clock in the morning and what do they do? They take the shortcut down the entry. I'm going, stay on the main road, stay on the main road. What are you doing, you stupid woman? And then they go and get attacked. Mm. But that that's nothing to do with supernatural. That's just, again, that's again, the Again, it's the build-up. Because yes. oh, you just yeah. know when it's... You, they hang it out, don't they, deliberately. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. um, Liz, I know because I've read them, has written some... <laughs> that's handy. ...some books with um, supernatural, paranormal uh, theme to them. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, uh, which I think are really uh, very nice, and um, that these are light, aren't they? These aren't like the sort of thing that give you sleepless nights. They, they, <laughs> made, they made me smile and laugh in places, which I think was the idea, wasn't it? Yes, yes, yes. They, mostly, they are. Yes. Um, so, do you want to uh, tell us what the books are about, and then we can have a little listen to some of the? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I should say I don't believe in ghosts and I don't believe in magic, which probably seems a bit strange for someone who's been known to write these kind of books. But um, when we were in 2020 and we were locked down, um, what I found myself doing was reading lots of rereads, um, lots of kind of light, comforting books, um, probably because of where we all were in the world and just feeling like I just want something light. I don't want anything that's going to, you know, feel heavy, make me feel sad, all that sort of thing. It felt like there's enough going on in the world already without, you know, adding to it in my reading matter. And I kind of thought, yeah, when I was thinking about what to write next, I I want to write something that is this kind of thing I want to read at the moment, kind of a light book. And that's where the idea of the magical bookshop came in. And, you know, surprise, surprise, it's a bookshop that's magical and it's a very cosy mystery series. And I won't talk about that so much now because... um, it does get more kind of paranormal and magical as it goes on. It starts off fairly innocuous. And then as you get further into the world, it gets deeper. Um, then later, um, the thing that really kicked off another series of mine, which is called The Spirit of the Law, was that I went on a Heritage Open Day and we went to um, an art gallery and studios um, that was basically a disused police station. 
and they said there were ghosts and they started telling stories about some of it. And uh, one of the stories that they mentioned was someone bringing a box to the police station back in the day and it contained four fingers. Oh, yes, I know. And it was, uh, you know, I just thought, what a, what a starting place for something. So, yeah, maybe, maybe that's not quite the light, funny you know, end of the spectrum. But I thought, <laughs> well, that's a great place to start. And I thought, well, you know, if you've got a haunted police station, then, you know, that's, again, that's something I could have a play with. And also, you know, the TV um, sitcom Ghosts, um, sadly missed, uh, was on. And I thought, yeah, you could have a lot of fun with a premise like this. So um, I began the story. And the first book, unsurprisingly, is called The Case of the Four Fingers. So... I'll read a bit from it now. And this is where um, Steph, who is a police constable in the present day. um, She's alive. She is alive, yes, not dead. Um, She's fairly new. She's been transferred to Liverpool from Cheshire Police. She's very young. She's very keen, uh, wants to make an impression. But unfortunately, she's got stuck um, doing duty at the Bridewell. Uh, which is, again, a mostly disused police station that the police force can't get shot of. And they feel they have a duty to keep someone there um, just so that any members of the public can report things, you know, um, as kind of public facing thing. So she's drawn the short straw, basically, and she is settling in for her stint at the Bridewell. The chilly breeze I'd let, felt earlier wafted over me, bringing me back to reality. I blinked. Standing in front of me was a woman in her mid to late twenties, medium height and slim with red gold hair. My first thought was that she must have sneaked in and crept upstairs without me hearing her. What do you... I blinked again. She was wearing a black jacket with bright metal buttons and a calf length skirt. It looked like an old fashioned uniform. Her hair was pinned up in a bun on the back of her head. And most worryingly of all, I could see through her to the notice board beyond. I'm not sure what I said next. I think I was too stunned to hear. I heaved myself out of the chair as the ghost said, with an outraged expression, Wash your mouth out, young lady. I edged round her. I couldn't bear the thought of going through her and wrenched the door open. Wait, the ghost cried. You can see me. I didn't reply. I was too busy clattering down the stairs. Two weeks on my own planning recipes and doing bicep curls was infinitely preferable to this. I don't mean you any harm said a voice that was far closer than I'd like. I turned at the bottom of the stairs and almost jumped out of my skin. She was right behind me. I don't care, I snapped. Go and haunt somebody else, or go back to the graveyard, or wherever you came from. The ghost shifted from foot to foot. I can't. What do you mean you can't? You've got no business scaring people. No wonder no one wants to work here. She twisted her hands, which were clad in little white gloves. You're the only one who's been able to see me. My heart sank like a stone. I can't be. You are. I've been invisible for a hundred years, more or less. Imagine what that feels like. I tried. Sometimes I felt invisible, in meetings where I made a point which went unnoticed until two minutes later a colleague said the same thing and it immediately went up on the board. What's your name? asked the ghost. I'm Nora. I'm... No, no, wait a minute. For all I know, if I give you my name, you'll do something weird like possess me. Nora started laughing, which didn't reassure me. Right, that's enough, I said. I agreed to come here and twiddle my thumbs, not chat to ghosts. You have to help me. Nora stretched out her hands towards me. I took a step back. I absolutely do not. What are you going to do about it? Nora looked smug. You have to stay here, don't you? You've got orders. I'll think of something, I said, and walked down the corridor, hoping for inspiration. I can go anywhere you can, said Nora. This is my police station too. No, it isn't. You're dead. So, I've been here longer and I know it better. I know it from the surgeon's office to the superintendent's quarters. Thank you very much. I thoroughly enjoyed those books. I'm just like, have you got anything ghostly? I have, yes. (laughs) Just listening to that one, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the television programme, Ghosts. Mm. Yeah. I'm like Liz, I don't believe in ghosts, but uh, I thought that was a tremendous... uh, Tremendous story, as was Liz's. As I say, I don't believe in ghosts. Magic? Ooh. I'm half and half on magic. Mm. Um, And aliens, I definitely believe in aliens. Don't mention the shed. Good heavens. It's ten to two. 
George, it's ten to two. They'll be here any minute. Are you ready yet? As ready as I'll ever be, love. Oh, George, look at you. What are they going to think? What on earth made you put on a pink tie with a check shirt? As for those trousers, I thought I'd given them to the charity shop. You did, my dear, and it cost me a pound to get them back. I also had to fork out 50 pence to rescue that favourite old cardi of mine. Anyway, my darling, you're looking so wonderful, nobody will notice me. Is that a new hat? I must say, it's very grand. Those large artificial red roses are extremely fetching and match your hair. As for your dress, words fail me. George, for goodness sake, stop waffling. Once you start, you say the silliest of things. Now remember, your job is to serve the tea and pass around the cakes. Whatever you do, try not to talk too much. And promise me, George, you won't mention the shed and whatever it is you get up in there, get up to in there. They might find my shed remarkably interesting, my dearest. Not everybody has your prejudices concerning what I create down there. No shed talk, George, and that's an end to it. It's important we get things right this afternoon. We don't want a repeat of what happened last time, do we, George? No, dear, we certainly don't. It's making me feel a bit weak and wobbly just thinking about it. I simply don't see why we have to go into all this trouble. Back in the day, we would have had all this sorted out in minutes. No dressing up, no fancy cakes, no grey tea. Quick hello, shake of hands, and that would have been that. Quick and simple. Your problem, George Baxter, is you've got not just one foot stuck in the past, you've got all three of them firmly rooted there. Things take a little more time and a certain finesse these days, something you'd never understand. Whatever you say, my dear. I'm sure you're right. You usually are. Remind me, what's their names? Oh, George, don't you ever listen. It's Mr and Mrs Spencer. Her name is Felicity, and she's a teacher, and his name is David, and he's our local MP. He's quite the rising star. Some even have him down for a future Prime Minister. What about children? Have they got children? Of course not, George. You know we never choose anyone with children. Children just complicate things. Apparently they couldn't have children. They tried, but unsuccessfully. A problem with him, it appears. They briefly thought of adopting, but decided on spending their money on a nice house and expensive holidays instead. And they're coming round here because... I despair, George. I really do. You're like this every time. If it was left to you, we'd never move on. They're coming around here because they're buying our house. Everything's been settled and they are due to move in on Monday. They just wanted to take some final measurements. If they're moving in here on Monday, my darling, where are we going? Have we got a new house? Somebody give me strength. I despair of the moment when we were first paired. There were so many partners I could have had. Why did I end up with you? You're like this every time. I sometimes wonder why we bother. We are not going anywhere, George. Sorry, dear. Silly of me. Of course we're not. I'd momentarily forgotten. You know how it is. I get carried away with myself at times and forget what I am. I'll just serve the tea and cakes and leave the rest to you, my darling. That way everything will go smoothly. Just to make sure I don't do anything untoward. Remind me again. What are we doing? It's quite simple, George. It always is. I put a little something in the tea and the cakes. Not too much. We don't want them passing out on us. I always find it so much easier when they're conscious and aware of what's happening to them. Once they are suitably relaxed, we will momentarily transform into our original forms and then transfer to our new host bodies. By three o'clock, we will be the new Mr and Mrs Spencer and this will be our house. Oh, I'm getting quite excited now, my dear. I'd become quite attached to dear old George Baxter, but was finding his job as manager of the local bank a little boring. I think I'm going to quite enjoy being a Member of Parliament. I can just see myself as Prime Minister and living in London. Uh, no, George, you're not going to be David Spencer. I am. But darling, no buts, George. It's far too important a role for somebody of your level of ability. As the leader of this cell, it was felt I would be more suited to be the next Prime Minister. You are to be Felicity Spencer, the teacher. The change of gender will do you good. But children, my dear, you know how I hate children. They bring out my rash and give me terrible headaches. I'm sorry, George, but the decision wasn't mine. It came down from on high. Ah, there's the bell. They're here. Go and sort out the tea tray while I let them in. And George, remember, no talking about the shed. Yay! <laughs> <laughs>
Paranormal? Well, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah of it's got yeah. aliens in it. It's got and, aliens, you know, yeah. 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 Shape shifting kind of possessing bodies and what yeah. have you. I'd say that's yeah. It but comes it comes under that heading, doesn't it? Well, and you know, it's, it's, it's your murder. world, yeah. your it's world, world, your rules. Yes. So yeah. And as many people say they wouldn't like to be living in my world. There is that. Yes, a few people have said since listening to the podcast they're worried about your wife. Yes. <laughs> yes. I have have reassured them that, you know, you you adore it. Um just um before we finish, uh, we were talking about whether we believe in the paranormal, whether we believe in witchcraft or magic, um, and you both obviously don't. Oh, I'm not sure about magic. You're not sure about no. magic. I'm just sceptical of everything. Well, I'll, I'll just tell you um, a tale. Um, my grandmother used to read tea leaves, mm-hmm. and apparently she read her own death. And my mum used to read tea leaves, and she read of somebody else's death so she stopped doing it mm. so i'm doing nights when i was trained to be a nurse and we were bored stiff so i said to the two girls i was working with i can read tea leaves big mistake so we went and got tea with proper tea leaves you know weren't mm-hmm. any tea bags and um they had their cup of tea and i read the first girls I can't even remember what i said to her. you know the usual thing you're going on a journey you're going to get a letter from somebody who's got r in the name that type of thing but when it came to the second girl i went I can see lots of birds in this cup, and some of them are going to die. Anyway, it was all tongue in cheek. Anyway, we used to do seven on seven off, so I didn't Mm -hmm. see that was our last night, so I didn't see her for seven days. And when we got back together again seven days later, she went, You'll never guess what happened. And I went, No, she said, My uncle breeds budgerigars, and a fox got in. Is it an aviary? Yeah, aviary, yeah. And killed half the budgies just as you foretold. (laughs) In the tea leaves. So I've never done it again since. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the budgerigars <laughs> breathed a sigh of relief that she stopped reading yes. tea leaves. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe foxes so. can read tea leaves yes. as well. I yeah. think so. Mm. So we'll leave you with that little thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, next time we'll be looking at the new cosy mystery genre. I mean, people love the more. I think it's a bit of a my, 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 my subject, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but until then, thank you so much for listening. You can get all our books on Amazon or you can look on the website. It also shows the notes from the programmes. And just to finish with, make sure you look under the bed tonight before you go to sleep. You have been listening to Only Murders in My Mind. A Random Thought production, produced by John Bissett. The music in Peril was composed and recorded by OM Studio Strings. Mm-hmm.